and you believe that there was a global flood and that Moses saved all the animals, all of them, the clean one, Noah, he cleaned the, uh, the, saved the clean and the unclean, then we should have Tyrannosaurus Rex walking around today. Evolution is a theory though, isn't it? The theory of evolution, it is that's a theory, it's yes. 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 But the Bible theory of evolution, is not but then a theory there's, as it's there's, not there's for you. Many, there's many theories about many things. Yeah. My theory and, is God and, created man in his image. And I believe that as well. Exactly. Not from a monkey. No, no that's fine. But what I'm saying is, if you're going to be literal mm -hmm. about the Bible, mm -hmm. you have to believe in a flat earth and you have to believe in a young earth. And both of those positions are totally untenable. Are you mad? Are you saying God can't create evolution? You know I'm evolution? not saying that. I'm asking you your opinion. I, I, I'm not I've questioning just God. I've just you given are. It to you. Sorry, what you've just said, I'm questioning God. Why? It must be, because Why? his word says otherwise. His word doesn't speak he's, of a missing link. His word, hang on. I've watched a lot of your videos. And then you said something about you don't believe the story of Genesis is literal. Yeah. But then I was reading the Gospel of Luke. Yeah. And it literally, you know, Joseph, the, not the father of Christ, but the, uh, the husband of Mary. It literally, um, like his genealogy, they go back all the way to Adam. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I saw you saying you didn't believe in Adam as a literal person. So yeah. To get your... So, so what, what what I'm saying is, Genesis is where where myth and history link. The, 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 the fact of the matter is, Genesis was given to the people or the Israelite people as they were coming out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So the event that was dominating their life was the Exodus event, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. And everything about the books of Moses needs to be understood through that prism, okay? Mm -hmm. So the real questions, you think about it, you're a Bronze Age slave, you've just been brutalized, your parents have been brutalized, and these miraculous things have just happened, convincing you of the supernatural, and now you're coming out of Egypt, okay? But the thing is, you've lived in a society that's pagan and, and believes in polytheism and believes that there's a God for everything under the sun, okay? You're not really asking scientific questions, right? These are questions that come from a scientific age. They're asking questions about, is there a God of the sky that's different to the God of Moses? Is there a God of the sea different to God of Moses? Is there a God of the birds different to the God of Moses? So what, what Moses communicates is the truth, that absolutely everything in creation is created by God and that he alone is the creator. So the, the seven days literal? No, I don't believe, don't believe so, no. Literal. No, because the, the questions, the question... Anything in Genesis? Some of it, the, some of it, it's all based in history. Like, there was a real creation. Yeah? yeah? There was a real creation. There was a real process of time by which that creation developed. There was a, a first group of humans, you know? Like, if you, if you read Genesis chapter 1, it doesn't speak of Adam and Eve. It speaks of men and women being made in the image of God, in the plural. You know, it and, does, it does, and not, it does not mention Adam in Genesis, in Genesis chapter two. Yes, does, yeah. yeah. So, so my point to you is that the, the story in Genesis is is answering the concerns of the Jewish people who were coming out of exile, who, who were in Exodus, coming out of Egypt, telling them and confirming them a, a number of truths. One, that the creation is not to be worshipped, only the Creator, and that there aren't many gods. There's just one God. Now, the other thing about Genesis is that. For a, for a book that is speaking in the mythological, mm -hmm. it contains within it lots of unprecedentedly accurate truths that boggle the mind when you think about them. The fact that there was light before there was sun, that, that's something that's counterintuitive and would have been counterintuitive to a simpleton in the Bronze Age who was a slave and uneducated. The light gives sun, so everyone would think the sun is the source of light. But Genesis clearly says that light was there before the sun. Now, but that's if you believe the sun is a star, though. Well, the sun is a star. Right, I believe that the sun is a star. I don't know, I don't know what you believe. <laughs> yeah, but but I believe that it's, it's a, 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 a massive ig, ig, uh, nuclear fission yeah, reactor. Yeah, yeah. That's it what I'm fuses saying. atoms See, together. But the point is, as, he, as the dust cloud that formed the sun collapsed in on itself, it would have generated heat yeah. before so it, before it reached... Light, it you're, 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 bro, you're missing a really good point. Yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I'm missing, I'm missing, I'm missing. Right? You, you're missing a really good yeah, point sorry, here. Sorry. Right? Mm -hmm. As the dust cloud collapses in on itself, yeah, yeah. 
it would have heated up and it would have generated heat and it would have generated light mm -hmm. but it would not yet have been a star mm -hmm. it would not yet have been a sun yeah, yeah. so when genesis says that there was light before the sun mm -hmm. that's actually accurate not inaccurate mm -hmm. When it says that the earth was gathered unto one place and all the oceans were gathered unto another, that is accurate, not inaccurate. We know that the continents were at one time in one place. So even though it's mythological, communicating theological truths, it still contains within it kernels of truth that are just incredible when you think that they were given to people who were uneducated slaves who had been brutalized through Egyptian slavery. Does that make sense? It does, but the thing is, go on. You see that the belief that Genesis is a literal. Yep. It leads, it like opens in different interpretations, stuff like evolution. Yeah. That people were literally, believe, but if if evolution is true, didn't God make man in His image? Yeah, men, so, men are made in God's so image. So if men are made in God's image, how can we have evolved from, like? Yeah, because like the, the way in which we're made. Yeah, that's fine. It's a great question. The way in which we're made in God's image is the fact that we have. My anger God like God has anger we have a sense of morality like God has or, uh, not a sense of right and wrong but God is the source of goodness and therefore defines for us what is ontologically good and bad it is that we have reason and God has reason it is that we have compassion and God has compassion it is that we have mercy and God has mercy it is that we have love and that God has love so in these ways we are made in God's image it isn't in the sense of our no, hands no, 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 no. Course, and toes course, course. and because then you've got to ask really weird questions no, no, no. like does God have a beard and is he black or white? You see when, I, you see when um, uh, the Bible says we're made in God's image, yeah. I believe that obviously the man, of the, man, the man version of God is obviously Jesus, I believe we're made in the image of Jesus who's God in man form. So we're made in that image in that sense and obviously when you believe in evolution and all these things so that means essentially you're believing that at one point God, like, obviously not essentially, but God was some primitive, like, he wasn't, he didn't have the mental capacity that we have now. Obviously, we haven't got the mental capacity of God, but yeah. to some extent we do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, 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 so evolution, that's what, something I've struggled to believe in is, is evolution, because when you don't take Genesis literally, it opens your mind to interpretations of, oh... Let me, was, let, let, yeah. me let me, let me, so, so, because lots of Christians, for whatever reason, baffles me, because... The scientific method and the scientific inquiry emerged out of a Christian milieu. Mm -hmm. It was a Christian culture that allowed the idea of scientific inquiry to also, thrive. Yes, and so I am utterly baffled, mm -hmm. though I do know where it originated in history, mm -hmm. I am utterly baffled as to why so many Christians are frightened by science. No, 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 science, no, not, not science does not in any way make any statement about God, about his creation, or about his purposes in history. It's beyond the scope of science to speak about these things. So the theory of evolution makes no contradiction to the idea that we are made in the image of God. Because the theory of evolution simply speaks about the process by which one species gives rise to another. It doesn't make any value judgment about the value of those species. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, and and the, qu the statement about us being made in the image of God is about our value mm -hmm. in the eyes of God. And also like, our mental capacity to an extent because Neanderthals or whatever or monkeys they obviously haven't got anything in common with humans in, in terms of our, our mental capacity. So what, like I said when, when I'm saying we're made in the image of God I don't mean physically I mean We've got to some extent the ability to create, the, like, the ability to understand. To create beauty. Exactly. Which but, is why we're made in the image of God. But if you believe in evolution, literally, like. I do. When, 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 I, I believe in evolution. Yeah, yeah, just course, for the record, course, course, I believe in I be evolution. I agree, but obviously I don't agree with evolution. But if you do believe in evolution, at what point was did God insert that mental capacity or like all the things that. But the first human. But when when is the first. These are, do you know the one thing I don't agree with? Evolution, because. Evolution is obviously used to disprove God. So how can we believe in something that's used to disprove God? Yeah. When the when the Bible literally tells us God made every animal individually, every human, like those clear differences. Yeah, but why is it doing that? Think about it. Because the when the Israelites came out of Egypt, yeah, but the, the Egyptians is, had a God for everything. Yeah, I agree, but, I just, but also so the, the Bible is still used to this day. So, so correct. People will read Genesis and they'll still read it literally. So just because it was made for the Egyptians, obviously God is all but knowing. Listen, so God right, will so, know that 
at this day where we are now, people yeah. still open Genesis and read it literally. So it's no, obviously not just is, for the... No, hold on one second. The, the, the reality is mm -hmm. that this idea of reading Genesis literally and emphasizing the literal interpretation of Genesis is a modern thing. If you look at early Christian authors like St. Augustine, like Oregon, like Irenaeus, mm -hmm. like Justinian, they don't emphasize the literal interpretation as being the preeminent interpretation. Mm -hmm. They emphasize the allegorical interpretation as being preeminent. Mm -hmm. So the idea that you, you know you don't put this on God. Yeah, yeah. Don't put our modern no, no, it's not on God, it's on the yeah, Bible. No, 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 what Bible. no, no, but what yeah. you're saying is that, that God knows that people will read it literally. Of course. If those people choose to read it literally, they are making a mistake. And also no, that's not what I meant. I meant when the Bible was revealed. Of not real when it was made obviously people are not just reading it and that or the stories are not just that at, at that time they're still being used till now so it's, the bible is not just applying to the people and would, would you, came out of would you agree time, it applies to everyone would you agree with me <laughs> would you agree with me that, that that genesis is making yeah, theological points them. primarily <laughs> yeah but it's also let, letting us know that god made us and I god agree. made everything it is. Individually, God designed us, God created. Oh, yeah, yeah, but like I said, that. atheists I, I use, with atheists all use was, was evolution as a contradiction to God. But they are abusing yeah, science when but, they do. But, but that's 90% ni that's of people in the Western but they are world. And all of that's them, 90, and all of them are abusing of science yeah. when they do. It doesn't matter how many people <laughs> abuse science. If they are trying to say that science proves that God doesn't exist, they are abusing the scientific <laughs> process. Science has no power to speak about such topics. Zero, none. It doesn't. At the same time, but they make... But obviously, evolution is a fact according to atheists. It's a fact. And, I believe it's a fact, And they can go, they go all the way back to what the first single-celled organism and how it just occurred it just happened without any without any well actually they, for them for, for any for any um scientist mm -hmm. the how we got from um how we got the very first life remains a mystery mm -hmm. that process is has yeah, not yet been discovered in a, in a mechanical a sense. Or whatever, like. well that's a comp brother can i just say yeah, yeah. and i mean this with love yeah, yeah. but i can tell from talking to you that you haven't read much science the big bang well, is a, a completely is separate topic to the question of first life and the evolution of life. Okay, it's a totally yeah. different topic. Well, what I'm saying is a contradiction to the Bible. It doesn't contradict the scriptures. I, I believe it does. Well, you're entitled to that opinion, but then you're like going to struggle. If you go back to so even the New Testament, when Joseph goes all the way back to Adam as the first. Yeah. So when did Adam become from a chimpanzee or whatever it was? Or when, 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 when the first but, man was the first man? But, when the first homo sapien was I that's a identified? I believe that's a contradiction. How, the where, where's the contradiction? Because. If Adam is the first, Adam's the first, literally is the first. Yeah, there was a he was there, was, there the was there was mankind. What does Adam mean? The first, I think. No, it doesn't. It means man, sorry. No, Adam Adwama means I don't know what it means, means mankind. Yeah, yeah. So when it says Adam, mm -hmm. you can either choose to read that as a proper pronoun, mm -hmm. i.e. A, a, sorry, as a proper noun, so the name of a person, mm -hmm. or you can read it as a statement about all of humanity, mankind. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, Genesis again, Genesis again is stupendously accurate, given the fact that Bronze Age people had no reason at all to assume that all human beings had one common source. Mm -hmm. They had just as many reasons to assume that the Africans had their source and the Europeans had their source and the people of the Orient had their source. And they could have, if, they, if it was just simple myth, unguided myth, they could have just easily come up with a myth where all these different groups have a different origin. And there's plenty of historical myths the creation myths that do talk about different things having different sources mm -hmm. but the genesis says that all humans came from one origin one source and science agrees with that so genesis is stupendously accurate in what it's saying mm -hmm. but it is ultimately do you honestly think that these slaves that came out of egypt yeah. would have understood science if god had tried to lay out for them science yeah but i'm asking you a question would they why not? They built. Did they, did Why they not, not? Did they not build the pyramids? And ancient people are not. They're not stupid, obviously. So of course the, they can comprehend science. The, There's a belief now that ancient people are just dumb. And, oh, I'm but, not. I'm not saying they were dumb. Yeah, but I'm not saying they were dumb because people like you can't recreate stuff that they've made but, from then till now. So of but, course they were not but stupid. But if, if, if God was to explain things and, like microbes and the idea of but most the, people now believe in microbes you know, and they have they've never looked at a microbe themselves. So. So we all believe it, but we, we just it's literally it's literally faith because we've never looked at it ourselves. No, but we believe so of course, we of course believe people it. could have 
could we, have comprehended it at that time because we like believe said, it. If we're, if we're we, made an image of God. We believe it. We, have, we believe yeah, it because wisdom. we live in a paradigm of scientific knowledge. Yeah, our true. our culture is scientific. Mm -hmm. That is why people will accept statements about microbes even though they've never looked yeah. into it to themselves. But the people that were in the Bronze Age mm -hmm. didn't have that paradigm. They had a paradigm about many gods and many superstitions and God was speaking into that paradigm, not into a scientific one. And so when he's speaking into that paradigm, he has to say things that are relevant and communicative to those people. Yeah? Just, to, just like when we speak into the scientific paradigm, we speak differently today than people in the past. And this is why I don't believe that we have to worry about Genesis being seen as literal or not literal. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I think I am. Yeah? I think that the Social danger, the danger with what you're doing is that... I'm literally yeah. reading the Bible and I'm taking the Word of God, and, but, but what, and, and I believe it's the Word of God as well. It's not like I don't no, 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 believe no, no, it's no, the no, Word no. of God. I'm saying literally I don't believe it. Yeah, but that's where I think you've got problems. Yeah. But then, I think but you the have lots then, of problems. But then when, the when do we define no, what's literal and what is not literal? Yeah, that's a good, that's a, that's a really good question. Where I'm from, in Africa, we had the Bible. I'm from Eritrea, which is native Ethiopia. We've had the Bible for thousands of years, yeah. and, they, and, they, and they've never looked at it wow. as if it's. They've always looked at it quite literally. Do you know no, what I mean? no. If you look at the what? Orthodox Church, if you look at the Orthodox Church of Ethiopia and Eritrea, which is the, which is the African Church, you know, not a European import. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a, a sub, you know, wasn't created by colonialists. Mm -hmm. It's a authentically African yeah. church. They read the Old Testament and emphasise the allegorical interpretations above the literal because that is how the Church Fathers did it. And the Orthodox Churches are very fond of the Church Fathers, just like I'm very fond of the Church Fathers. You, you should. That literalism is something that emerged in the 20th century, and it emerged, yeah, it emerged as a reaction to the abuse of science by atheists. It is a reaction to people abusing science that has led to people asserting a literal interpretation of the Old Testament. But you did ask a good question, which is, at what point do we start speaking about real history? When does, when does myth become real history? And, and, and that's a very debatable point, but I would personally view it around the time of Abraham. <laughs> That, that, that we emerge into real history as we would think then of it. you're saying that, but then, like I said, in, in Luke's Gospel, it says that Adam was a real, Adam was yeah. A, 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 yeah, able, Cain and Abel, they all... It says that all. Jesus was descended from the first man. I believe that. No, but it literally says the name by, it, it names... But it says Adam, does Abraham, it? Yep. It, Adam, it names Cain and names yeah. Abel. What does Adam mean again? Yeah, but it names Cain and Abel also, yeah. as, what does, as the yeah, sons yeah, yeah. of... of yes, of yes, Adam. yes, because Adam would have had sons. Yeah, yeah. so who... So, so, my, my, that, that, that means that the Gospel of Luke is obviously claiming that was also, Genesis is also obviously literal. There was definitely a first human being. Yeah. It was actually but a where, first oh, where group else, of human where beings. Where else is Adam named apart from Genesis? The, the point is though, and what, Cain and I, I don't believe, do you believe that, that God made everything in, four, in, seven, in six 24 hour blocks? Maybe not 24 hour blocks, but I believe it was seven days. Cause What's it, a also, day? it, it makes one of the key things in Genesis is on the seventh day he rested, where the Sabbath comes from. So. God do you believe in a young earth then? Do you believe the earth is only 6,000 years? Know. Hold on, if you're going to be... If you're gonna be if you're gonna, I don't know, I don't know. Hold on one second. If you're going right. to be consistent to yeah. your own logic, you have to believe in a young earth. I'm just saying, it says... Has, the do Bible you believe has in a flat a, earth? I don't know about a lot of these things, honestly. I'm, right, if but, I'm being honest, I don't know. Uh, no, that, that's fine. To, but what I'm saying is, if you're going to be literal mm -hmm. about the Bible, mm -hmm. you have to believe in a flat earth and you have to believe in a young earth. And both of those positions are totally untenable. We don't live on a flat earth and we don't live in a young earth. And anyone who argues that they... Because if you're going to say, well, in, Je in, in the Gospels, it says that Adam's a real person. Well, also, it gives the years that each of these people have lived. And if you add them all up, as has already been done, but don't forget, no then it's about 6,000 years. No and that, that is ridiculous. Years. Some of them live, Adam lived for apparently 900 years. Yeah, which means that this is, this is all... I forget the bishop that did it. He counted all the... It's about 10,000 years. No, it's about 6,000 years. Do you honestly, are you honestly stood here saying you believe in an earth that is just 6,000 years old? I don't know. And, and this is my point, bro. You're, you're I've, I've been to uni, I've, 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 studied, I really I've studied evolution. But what, 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 to me, I learn when I read evolution is that it literally contradicts God. It, contradicts it doesn't the, contradict God. And that's how atheists take it. And when atheists teach evolution, yeah. I've been to school, like I said, in school, yeah. we was taught evolution in our no, re-books. Okay, not in science books, we was taught yeah. evolution in literally our re-books. I went to a Catholic school. Yeah, bro. So but, if but, you're being taught evolution in an re-book, 
you're literally they're literally putting in your mind that God is not real. What's, what's real is evolution. It doesn't what, contradict. He, I I am a Christian. Yeah. I believe in Jesus. But, but, but the I, I'm wrong, saying though, the way that evolution not, is taught not, not is to wrong. make you yeah. contradict bro, Jesus bro, in your, bro, God in your mind. I am a Christian. Mm -hmm. I believe in evolution. Mm -hmm. I agree with you that the way that it's taught in school needs revision. It needs revision to accommodate for the idea of a God being the author and the the one that is behind and controlling it. Yeah, that's what that's what I believe. Yeah, right. But 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 that's about that's about a, brother, 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 that's about a political point. It's about the way that we do education. It is not. It is not. A, a proof that evolution is anti-Christian faith. No, 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 it's not. But the way it's taught. I agree with that. If it's I taught agree in religious with that. textbooks. I agree with you. But that's the point. All you're doing is making a socio-political point. Mm -hmm. You're not making a point that evolution contradicts the Christian faith because it doesn't. It, it definitely contradicts Genesis. It doesn't contradict Genesis unless you read Genesis literally. But, how, but, but if you read Genesis literally, that's, that's you have to believe in a 6,000 year earth. Doesn't give, it doesn't actually give dates. Do you believe in a 6,000 year earth? We don't know how long Adam was in heaven for. Just we, don't know how, we don't know how long Adam was in paradise for. Uh, Adam, sorry, it says in Genesis that the garden was placed on the earth. Exactly, so we don't know how long Adam was there in harmony no, no. before Eve. No, one second, one so second. We don't know how long Hold that on, happened. one second. Genesis says that the garden was placed on earth. It says that Adam lived for 900 years. Before he got cast out. No, no, that's the total of his life. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly how many years it is, it's pretty irrelevant. Yeah. The point is, if you're going to argue that we have to believe in a literal genesis, then you need to be consistent and also argue that the earth is just 6,000 years old. And if you're going to do that, your faith is going to collapse because you're arguing nonsense. But I'm offering you a Christian way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. This isn't something I've made up. Oregon did it, St. Augustine did it. Mm -hmm. The church fathers of old did it. Yeah. They interpreted the Bible, the Old Testament particularly, primarily in an allegorical fashion. And that's the way that Christians need to handle the Old Testament. Yeah. They need to emphasize not a literal reading of the Old Testament in every verse, but to emphasize the spiritual and the allegorical and the typological understandings of the Old Testament as pointing towards Jesus, who is the Messiah. Because that's what the Old Testament does. It points towards Jesus. Of course, of course I agree with that. But that's, that's where my argument goes back to. But your argument, right? If you're going to argue for a six thousand year Earth, yeah, then then you're you're arguing contrary to all good evidence. Science does not make any statement about whether God exists or whether God doesn't exist. It doesn't make any statement about that. Christians have nothing Science to fear. No, it in, doesn't. In terms of the origins of life. It meant obviously, obviously no, it doesn't. It, it contradicts a literal interpretation of Jesus. Sorry, a literal interpretation of Genesis. And I believe that that literal interpretation of Genesis is something that developed in the modern age. Came out of the fundamentalist movement, which came out of the, the, the kind of 1910 Edinburgh Conference reaction to the Roman Catholic missionary impulse and, and a reaction to the kind of um, Not really, scientific... Not people just read the Bible. Brother, I don't think you know the history. No, 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 but you're saying that's where it comes out from, but in, con in a contrast to that, if you literally just read the Bible without any outward, then it's also contradicting a lot of... Well, no, I'm sorry, but Oregon read the Bible, St. Augustine read the Bible, and they didn't go for a literal interpretation of Genesis. Mm. Well, I just believe that. It believes a lot. Like you said, if you're just interpreting, when do you know when to interpret? When do you know when it's literal? You're just make, you just made an assumption that it should be in, around Abraham's time, did you say? No, no, yeah, that's, 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 that's my opinion. Assumption. Yes, that is my opinion. Exactly, so that is my opinion. It just leaves a lot of doubt, and that's where atheists then come in and say this. But if your mind is weak, maybe, but my mind is not weak. I think a lot of people, a lot of people have very weak understandings of the faith and so anything that seems to knock anything about their faith and it's kind of like their faith is like a house of cards, well if you knock this away my whole faith collapses. Well if your faith is weak, maybe, but mine is not. No, I'm not saying my faith is weak because, like I said, salvation goes with Jesus. I'm talking about the Old Testament. So what I'm saying is that the, 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 the Old Testament narratives, when they go back far enough, it's where myth and history become infused. When it starts to become real history, 
then it is around the time of Abraham. But let's also bear in mind this. The Old Testament is literature. It's not a camera. It's not capturing history in real time. So when it portrays, when it portrays history, it's more like a, pic, a portrait, a still portrait. It's not like a, a motion picture. And we've got to remember that when we're dealing with history in literature. The history in literature is portraits of history. It's not real-time live-action history. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. but my main problem is when you believe... When, when God says in Genesis that he made, he made man, obviously in his image, he made the animals all separately, all individually, that's where I've my I've already problem addressed this, why, how evolution. I see this point. But you're, 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 but what... But from the, single -celled organ yeah, but the, the point is, God is speaking to ignorant people who believe that there were gods for everything. Mm -hmm. And Genesis Absolutely. is saying there isn't gods for everything, there's one God that made everything. That's what Genesis is doing. There's nothing to be fearful from about science. It doesn't make any statement about God. It can't. It's not in its purview to do so. It doesn't have the power to do so. Atheists might abuse science, but they are abusing science when they say that science disproves God. And yes, the educational system does need reform so that it shows that God is the creator. But, but the fact that it doesn't is a socio-political point. Mm -hmm. It's not a justification for Christians to be ignorant about science mm -hmm. or to be ignorant about how Christians the church has interpreted science. the Bible. Christians are ignorant about theoretical science, science that can't really be proven, because evolution can't actually be proven. There's no, like, there's no actual factual evidence pointing that evolution is true. So that's, it's still a belief, evolution, to an extent, because it's still theoretical science. And that's where the difference between believing in God. So what am I going to believe in? That God created the world? Or am I going to believe in theore theoretical science that was created by man that has no real factual why, basis? Why do you set them up as if they contradict one another? Because that is, that is the divide. They don't contradict it's, one another. The divide. God created the universe through the Big Bang. I am the Lord thy creator. I have created all things by my power alone. I have stretched out the heavens. The earth sits in a vacuum of space that the Lord has placed the circle of the earth upon nothing, that God has created man, that he has made him in his own image. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in evolution or science that contradicts what the Bible teaches, because the Bible is teaching theological points and the scientific inquiry is about the mechanics of the world. These are different it questions. Can't be proven. A lot of it can actually be proven. It can't. It's never, it's never been seen, it's never been observed, it's never, there's no evidence of evolution happening, there's no evidence of half... Have you got a mobile phone? I have, yeah. Do you trust it? Yeah. Right. Do you know the, well, what to, do you well, know the know theories, do you know the theories that allow the satellites to move around the Earth so that you've got signal on your phone? I don't know. CMC, E equals MC squared. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's the use of the theory of relativity that allows a satellite to stay in orbit around the Earth that allows you to have signal on your phone. Mm -hmm. That is evidence. That same theory, that same theory of relativity mm -hmm. helps us to understand how gravity works. Helps us to understand, therefore, and makes predictions about how the universe will behave. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and what we see is evidence, observable evidence, that the, the universe is behaving according to the predictions of that theory of relativity. These are all beliefs in my opinion. These are facts. These are not beliefs. These are observable facts. Like, I am stood here as an observable fact. There's nothing to be frightened of by science. It does not contradict our faith. And Christians are creating an obstacle to the gospel unnecessarily whenever they make this kind of dualism. Mm. It's not a dualism. Science, it's literally, if you look at the, like, in the society that we live in, obviously now, they use science. Do you believe not, that the Earth... Not us. Do you believe that use the Earth, science to discredit the you, Bible. Uh, so what? I'm just saying, theoretically, so I don't, I don't what? believe you can believe in both, personally. Well, then you've got a problem. Do you believe I, that the Earth goes around the Sun or that the Sun goes around the Earth? I don't know. Obviously, I know I've been taught, I've been taught that the Earth uh, rotates around the Sun. Brother, you're, 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 you, whatever fellowship you're in needs to do better. You need to do better. If you're stood in this park and you're honestly saying you cannot say that the Earth rotates around the Sun, then your that. education has failed you, bro. Mm. You have got bought into superstitions, modern superstitions, no, no, and you've bought into mythos. Like, there's nothing wrong with believing that the Earth goes around the Sun. 
unless you believe in a literal reading of the Bible, in which case you can't argue that. Because a literal reading of the Bible would suggest that the sun goes around the earth. <laughs> like I said, that's when, uh, when, when do you decide it's literal, when do you decide it's not literal? Like you were speaking to that fellow Christian, yeah. he was saying he doesn't believe that Jesus was, was literal. crucified, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying, that, that's what all the interpretation, yeah. and people can decide when and when it's not literal. That's yeah, what I'm saying, so, so, that's, so where, that's, that's a fair that's question. problem for me. So it's a question about epistemology. Yeah. So, so for, us, for, for, a, for a paradigm to hold up, for a narrative to hold up, it's got to be internally consistent, so it's got to be non-self-contradictory. It's got to be an accurate description of observable reality, mm -hmm. and it has to practically work. So those are your three criteria to decide whether your interpretations are right or wrong. One, is it internally consistent? Two, does it, does it actually correspond to observable reality? Three, does it practically work? Okay, now I'm confident that Christianity is a paradigm that meets those criteria. It's internally consistent, it works with reality as we encounter reality, and it, it, pr and, and it is practical. It's something that gives guidance to our lives, okay? Now, there'll be little bits within that worldview that need tweaking for all of us. I'm, I'm not infallible, I get things wrong. You're not infallible, you will get things wrong. But, but the reason why your interpretation I reject is because you're stood here saying you can't know that the uh, sun goes around the earth. Right, do you believe that the sun goes around the earth? I don't know, I haven't done I haven't, I haven't looked through a telescope myself and observed it, so I don't know. Okay. Obviously I've been taught it. I've, I've so passed, why, I've passed science why, taught, why so. now are you applying a, 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 a sort of rational, a, 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 a sort of extreme form of skepticism the that to live, scientific the world, theories but the you world, wouldn't apply that to the bible you know, because i believe in god that's why that's, that's what i'm saying that's, that's i what believe what in god I, i'm not saying you don't but you see the argument that you're making that that's arguments that atheists literally will use to deny the existence of god you know if an atheist makes a good argument and, yeah. right it doesn't mean that that argument is false mm -hmm. the person making the argument doesn't prove whether an argument is right or wrong okay now, I am not intimidated by anything that the atheists say, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying but I also either. agree with a lot of what the atheists say. So, the, 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 the fact of the matter is, there's, just because an atheist is saying something does not mean that Christians have to say the opposite. We don't have to say the opposite just because an atheist says something. Fundamentally, the thing that we have to argue about is whether, whether um, God actually exists or not. But that has nothing to do with scientific observation. Scientific observation does not contradict our faith in any way. Any, say, sci any atheist who, like Richard Dawkins, who uses science to say that God doesn't exist, is abusing the scriptures the of, and is abusing science. It is the majority of atheists that use that. So what? Again, so what? What does it prove? Nothing. It proves nothing that lots of, si lots of atheists are ignorant of science. All it proves is that atheists are ignorant of science. Any, any, any true atheist, any true atheist who really values science would never use science to say God doesn't exist. Because they would recognize that science doesn't have the power of description or the power of analysis or the power of experimentation to answer that question. So Christians have nothing to be frightened of by science because it doesn't have the power to talk about the question of whether God exists. The way I look at it, evolution is used to disprove... It doesn't though. It's abused by people that don't know science. It doesn't disprove our faith in any way, so you've got nothing to be frightened of it by. Which means that you don't have to hold on to a literal view of Genesis. But I want to say this, it doesn't matter to me whether you do or you don't. If you want to believe in a literal view of Genesis, as your Christian brother, makes no difference to me. I'm happy to embrace you as a brother, have fellowship with you. Do you know why? Because it's a secondary issue. It's a secondary issue that, is not per that, that doesn't determine our salvation. It's not a salvation issue. But if you are going to hold on to a literal interpretation of Genesis, then be consistent and argue for a 6,000 year earth and argue that the sun goes around the earth. Because that's what a literal reading of the Bible would make you do. Yeah, but 
that's, that's again that's where my that's where my problem comes in because then like you said even the bible says it was made on the four pillars of the earth uh, uh, the world was made on the four pillars which people can they say that proves that the earth is flat but then that's so so now but you're not saying that the bible is well, essentially telling a lie you, no no because this is the point you're saying that it's either got to be literal or it's false and what I'm saying I'm to you, saying no, but that is the argument you're making. You're saying that we either have to take it literally, mm. or it's not I'm true. That these are the these are what atheists will go and then say. Your so Bible. what does that demonstrate, except that they are ignorant of the handling of it's scripture? Just, it's two different. It's two different points of view. But yeah, it's but it shows that they are ignorant about how they handle scripture. You don't have to agree with their the dichotomy. Is, if you remember where I started this whole argument with. Uh, Wait, I want to. I want to. I want to pin this down. Sorry, sorry. Right. You quoted the passage. Now, we, we, we'd have to look it up where it talks about the earth being on the four pillars of something. I, I'm not so sure about that, but let, let's, let, let's just take it that it does. You're saying that... that I'm not saying there's a little four pillars. Right, but, but that's the point. So therefore you're making now an interpretation, which is what I'm doing with Genesis. So if you can do it with one passage of scripture, why can I not do it with a different passage of scripture? Yeah. So then the question is, which of our interpretations of scripture are internally co coherent, correspond to reality as we encounter it, and practically work? Now let's look at Genesis as our example. I am saying that the, the Old Testament is interpreted by the Church Fathers as allegorical. And so I'm interpreting Genesis as allegorical. My interpretation of Genesis as allegorical means that there is no conflict between interpreting Genesis and reality as we encounter it. And it gives me theological and moral points by which I can build my life so it's practical. Now let's use a literal interpretation. Is it internally consistent? Yes, it is. If you argue for a 6,000 year earth and you argue that the sun goes around the earth, it is internally consistent. Two, does it correspond to reality as we encounter it? No, it does not. Uh, thirdly, is it, does it give you spiritual and does it give you a way to live your life? Yes, at a spiritual level, but also at a physical level, at a material level, it causes you all kinds of problems. Because if you're going to argue against reality as we encounter it, you're going to struggle I don't in life. The Bible contradicts reality as we encounter it. Even Thank the, you. The Neither do I. Even the Old Testament, though. So, if, even believing that God created the world in seven days, how does that? So, does the how earth? Does that make, how does, does that make? How does? How is that contradiction to reality? So, now? so what is at the centre of God's well, everything creation? Everything we observe is literally there in Genesis. That all, the, all animals are made different. All what about dinosaur made... bones? But, but there's a theory that all dinosaurs died during the flood and then their, their bones were. Why? But Noah was sent to preserve all the animals two by two. Didn't obviously that include the dinosaurs? Obviously not all animals. Why, why not? It wasn't all animals. Where, where's the exception in the story of Noah for dinosaurs? Well, obviously God didn't. <laughs> Let's put it up. Yeah, Let's read that, it yeah. because this is the point. All these people that, are, that argue this kind of. This kind of nonsense. Yeah, we're you just going to change the Bible. My, my, my neighbor. So if I'm reading that, that shows me that the, the Gospel of Luke is going back. To, obviously, the Jews knew Adam as the first man. Yeah. That's what they believed. Right. And the Gospel originally first went to the Jews, didn't it? Right. So if if the Gospel of Luke is going all the way back to Adam, yeah. His, his sons Cain and Abel. Which we wrote. You gone, yeah? That's gone, bro. Um, like I said, if, if it literally, if the, if the Gospel of Luke is talking literally, yep. naming everyone one yep. by one, yep. all the way back yep. to Adam, you know that's, the, when, that's you, when the problem came to me. So is, you know the is bishop, Genesis, you know the bishop that we talked about, who who, who gave the date of the Earth as being six thousand years old, right? He used your exact logic. He took all these names in the Bible. He found all their dates and he calculated an estimated age of the Earth. Now, you can be internally consistent and argue for a 6,000-year-old earth, but you're going to be laughed at, and rightly so, because people that believe in a 6,000-year-old earth are ignorant people. So like Luke was ignorant then? Luke was not arguing for a 6,000-year-old earth. He was arguing that Jesus Adam, Christ was fully man because he originated from human beings. So, so, sorry to cut you off. So you see that when um, Luke went back all the way to Adam, that's not, you're saying that wasn't literal. So the, way, the names that he named one by one. Luke, Luke is correct to say that Jesus Christ descends from the first human beings. This is, this is where it gets confusing for me because 
Yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah, ex
or white, there is an option in the middle. Mm -hmm. And it is the option that I'm offering to you, the one that doesn't see a tension or a fight between the scientific world and the Christian worldview. And why? Because the scientific worldview emerged out of the Christian worldview. It was born of Christians. Darwin, Darwin, I don't believe social Darwin is not social Darwin. Darwinian evolution is not really Christian. The idea of inquiring into nature is born out of Darwin. Darwin was he, he, did, he despised Christianity from what, from, from what I've learned. No, he was, he was he was born as a Christian, but he he, he didn't he didn't he, believe in Christianity. He rejected Christianity because of and what happened to his family. Social Darwinism is literally an alternative view of Christianity. No, it isn't. No, no. I'm saying when Darwin came up with the theory, he never he never, he never came up with the theory of social Darwinism. Okay, so when, social Darwinism. Not social Darwinism. I said Darwinian evolution. Darwinian evolution. Darwinian evolution. Okay, Bob, sorry, sorry, Kai. You know when you know when um, Darwinian evolution was first that was first, was first came to light. Did, 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 was it not rejected by church fathers and it was rejected by many bishops, but not all bishops. Once again, there were bishops that accepted the theory of evolution without any problem at all. But essentially, he was, he was called a heretic, you know, Darwin? By some. Darwin, just, just, just to be clear, as I understand the history, and I'm no expert on Darwin's life, but I believe that Darwin, to my understanding, rejected his Christian faith because of what happened to his daughter and to what happened in, to his marriage. It was his personal life that collapsed that led him to reject his faith. And there's lots of Christians that do that. He never, Darwin never came with his theory in conjunction with Christianity. It was an opposite theory. Um, he, he never, he never, he never, I don't know enough about his writings to say whether he did or he didn't. I think he I've presented. I think. He, I think he presented his, to my knowledge, and I might be wrong, but he presented <laughs> his argument as not being in contradiction to the Christian faith, as not actually stating anything about. It was literally called a heresy when, it, when, when Darwin first came with that theory. By some, by but not by all. Because it wasn't, okay. it wasn't accepted. Do you see that it was not by all Christians? Yeah, no, I, I, I do see. It is not black and white. There was something in the middle. There were Christians that had no problem with the theory of evolution at the time of Darwin. That's true. Yeah. But the majority. No. Not no. Darwin not true. Because if that was the case, then why wasn't why wasn't it embraced? It wasn't embraced. Mo most it was embraced probably about the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Probably mo embraced. Most most new ideas are rejected when they first come. It takes time. Because but the reason why it was the reason why. The, the, the scientific, the, the view of Darwin is used as a way of, of attacking the faith is partly because of Christians like yourself. Because you create this war that doesn't have to exist between the scientific world and the church. And I'm saying to you, all you're doing is hurting the church. You're hurting the church because you're making an enemy where an enemy does not have to be. The enemy, the enemy is already there because, like I said, the majority of people they reject they not, they reject. because of the way it's taught in schools. And we both agree that that needs to be changed. The educational system needs to acknowledge in its teaching of evolution that it is subject to the Creator. That's what I believe. But you're not going to do that except by becoming political and by seeking to change the educational system and by seeking to seize those positions of power and influence that lead to the kind of social reforms that we need. You've got to take that into account of what Jesus did and the fact that he did. I still don't believe in That's fine, I don't believe in evolution. I don't convince you, but but I, I, I want you to... It's not because I haven't done my research. That's fine, but what I want, if you're believing in literal genesis, I want you... I believe, I don't, maybe, maybe not literally God made the world in seven days, I believe God made us for his image. He made every Everyone. That's what yeah. I believe. You've got, you've got animals. Like I don't know when I believe that as well. But I don't believe. I don't see how you can believe God made us in His image. But essentially, we was at one stage of our, of our in our evolutionary in evolutionary trail. At one point, we was we was dim witted. Because you're because you're confusing the means with the end. I don't believe God needs to do evolution. He, he make, doesn't. He doesn't need to do. He doesn't need to make. He doesn't. He doesn't need us to evolve. He can just make man. Yeah, you're right. So why? So why do we? Need, but, but why can't he? But why? Are you, are you saying that he can't? I'm not saying he can't. So he can. That's why faith. He can. You there you go. Well, how would he need to? That's, now, that's if he can, and all the evidence suggests that he did, he want babes in God. well, that's debatable. It's also evolution is also a faith to an extent because you have to believe in evidence. Um, there's, no, there's no actual evidence. Some people treat evolution in, in, in a faith paradigm. 
They don't see us. They don't see us. They don't see us. I'm not going to say the majority. They don't see us as a faith, but essentially it's just your belief. I'm it's trying to look at the Lord doesn't say it. It never has been. It's the Lord. Yeah, again, you're creating a false dichotomy between science and Christianity. And I refuse to accept that false dichotomy because it is false. Christians can be pro science. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I don't know if Christians can be pro theoretical science. Which yeah, is I'm not, not saying that. All it's science is theoretical. There's actual evidence for a lot of things. There's not actual evidence for evolution. Bro, there's not actual evidence for evolution. There is actual evidence for evolution. Okay, so you've got the fossil record. That's not evolution. That's not actually a fact. Why don't we have a fossil? Record. Okay, all, explain all to me dinosaurs again. Let's go back to Noah and the dinosaurs. In the Bible, does it mention dinosaurs? Right, let's go. Let's go to. So, all these people that believe in a literal genesis, all right? You believe in a global flood? I believe in that. And you believe that God believe saved. In a global flood? I believe in a flood, but no, not a global flood. I'm trying flood. to see whether. Oh, you don't believe in a global flood? Don't believe in a so global flood. They don't believe flood. Noah existed. No, I believe that. I believe that. Yeah, I believe that Noah might have existed, yeah. Because Noah was also. You've seen that list I was telling you from the Gospel of Luke. Noah yeah. was also mentioned. In so, so, hold on, right? So. Sons and his wife. Right. Okay. So the Lord said to Noah, Enter the ark, you and all your household, for you alone I have seen to be righteous before me in this time. You shall take with you of every clean animal by sevens, a male and his female, and of the animals that are not clean, two, a male and his female. Also of the birds of the sky, by sevens, male and female to keep offspring alive on the face of the earth. For after seven more days, I will send rain on the earth, 40 days and 40 nights, and I will blot out the face of the land, every living thing that I have made. Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. Do you see in there any exception for dinosaurs? He says clean animals and unclean animals. So, how about for dinosaurs? No, so why, why, why do we have fossil records of dinosaurs but no yes, but living saying, dinosaurs? Why are no Tyrannosaurus so rex? But, but Noah was come, did Noah fail? Did Noah fail to get all the animals onto the ark? It says clean and unclean. So that's all of them. Because there are only two categories of animals in 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 that in the in this writing, clean and unclean. So why don't we have any dinosaurs? Maybe they want him to be clean. But it says unclean are saved. Look, it says it right here. Yeah, but that's what yeah? you repent. Yeah, that, that was it. Of yeah, the animals that are and not clean, two, and then, and then, a male repent. and his female. So unclean are included. Yeah, it does. It says that are not clean, two, a male and his female. So that's so unclean animals are included in those animals that are saved. So all the clean animals are saved, and all the unclean animals are saved. Is that an interpretation or is that literal? Well, I'm just I'm, I'm, ask, I'm asking you now. But that's my point. If you're going to be literal, there should be Tyrannosaurus rexes walking the earth. No, I'm asking you. Is that literal? No, you don't believe that. It's not literal in the sense that no. Well, hold on. It's not literal in the sense for me. That, that there was a, a grand global flood and that before the flood there were dinosaurs walking the earth. Because I believe in evolution and I believe that the dinosaurs died out 65 million years before the first man ever walked the earth. But if you believe that there are fossils, that are dinosaurs, that you can go to the British Museum and you can see them, and you believe that there was a global flood and that Moses saved all the animals, all of them, the clean one, Noah, he cleaned the, uh, the saved the clean and the unclean, then we should have Tyrannosaurus Rex walking around today. That is why this kind of literalism is going to hold you back. I don't think it's done. If anything, Bob, I'll be honest. Okay, fine. So where's the Tyrannosaurus Rex then? I don't know. Why did they die? There's many theories as to why they died. They wiped out in the flood? So Noah failed to do what God commanded him? Maybe they're just living in the Said all the clean animals and the maybe, maybe, maybe animals. a dinosaur is not considered an animal. What is it considered then? Obviously, maybe God didn't consider an animal. <laughs> so, he that in Genesis created all those things that walk and creepeth upon the land didn't include dinosaurs. And one thing, maybe in as an animal it wasn't maybe it wasn't maybe that's not included as an animal no no animal. genesis genesis is really clear if you're going to be literal you're going to be literal and this is what i mean 
you, you have a logic that doesn't correspond, you have a truth claim that doesn't correspond to reality as we encounter it. And that's one of the things that's telling you that there's something wrong with your worldview that needs to be adjusted. Yeah? Because if your worldview is not corresponding to reality as we encounter it, then something about it needs to change. And I'm saying to you, it doesn't have to be literalism. It doesn't have to be, it's either literally true or it's false. There is a third option. I'm stood here making that third option available to you. Oregon stood in this third option. Augustine stood in this third option. Galileo Galilei stood in this third option. Copernicus stood in this third option. There is a heritage of Christians that stand in this third option. And your worldview will be stronger if you stand in it as well. It's hard for me to just think what's literal, what's not literal in the New Testament and the Old Testament. Go away and think about this question. Where are all the dinosaurs? That's, just, that's not really important to me. Well, it is if you believe in a literal genesis. But this is what I'm saying, but this is where you've just confused me because you don't know if the flood was literal, if it was a full globe. So no, my, my view on the my view on my view so on that's where I get confused. You see what I'm getting confused now. My my view, my view, the, the, the part of my view on the, the flood is that it was a regional flood that destroyed the world of the the person that it experienced. Doesn't, it doesn't, that's, that's, your, that's your assumption, though, yes. because the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible literally says everything was wiped out. Yeah. But yeah, this yeah, is what I'm saying. If you're, if you're, if you're, this is where, this is where Christians, but I, I, atheists will then jump in and say, let them, contradict I'm not frightened by the atheists. But you might not be, I might not be, but there's a lot of people that are being led away from from the truth because of because things Because their identity in Christ is weak. But there's people that are trying to understand Christ and then things like this. You, you, you teach that the flood is not literal, someone else might yeah. teach that it's not literal. You'll, you'll say so, they have, so they have to come to a, a position of conscience that they... And God also says I'm not a God of confusion, so why? So, but, the, but then they have to come to a position of conscience that they believe in good conscience. It is not important for me to convince you not to believe in a literal Genesis. But I am not going to go along with you in believing in a literal Genesis. I'll yeah, yeah. understand from you. Cold, and I'm trying to explain. But you keep trying to fit things into a simple category of literal or false, and I'm saying it isn't that simple. There is another category to work in, which is this idea of, of mythology, which is this idea not of false things, because I know that's where your mind's going, but the idea of true things that are not literal. When Christ tells a parable, that's a parable. That's the difference between parables. Right. That has nothing to do with... Genesis well, mythology... Is portrayed as a parable. Myth myth exactly. Mythology, that's I'm not saying it is. Yeah. I'm not saying it is. And also when I said Luke goes back all the way to Adam, that's not portrayed as a parable. And again, I'm not disputing... It's not I'm mythological. Not, I'm, I'm not disputing. So that's disputing. where the confusion comes in. I, well, then, do you believe in a, a 6,000-year-old earth? I believe that the periods of time between the genealogies um, are not accounted for. So, so it's not literal? It is literal, but the people have added up lifespans rather than the, exactly. the span of the Earth's existence. So, so, so what you're saying is there's links in the chain that are not there? In yeah, the genealogy. Yeah, between the end of one chapter and so the So she's not being another. literal either. She's just no, being I'm not. less no, literal. No, I'm saying if you speak about Noah until he's 930 exactly. years old and then you begin talking about somebody else, you don't know how many years of, of elapsed. Right, hold on one second. Okay, like, yep. look, you've just don't said. love me in you've that just said, No, please. You've just, said, you've just said that this genealogy, <laughs> yep. right, has links missing. Uh, you're going to give me Matthew, are you? No, I'm going to give you Luke. Oh. Okay. Yep. So there are links missing Tell in me their this ages genealogy. As you go it doesn't give you their ages. Tell me their ages. Doesn't so. matter to my argument. It's not where it matters. It's they're not there. It doesn't there. matter to my argument. It matters to mine. They're not there. It doesn't matter to my but argument. It matters to mine, and it's a two-way, three-way conversation. <laughs> so, so I'm going to point out so, that there are no ages. So my point to you is that you're saying, you're saying. Don't tell me what I'm saying. I'm saying it loud enough. So, so you're yeah, yeah. actually said this, doesn't it? Bro, I mean, I, I want to come back to, to back to this point because there are things that I want to talk about. Yeah, like. Let's just get to the genealogies. I know the genealogy. It doesn't have the ages, is my point. I'm not saying there are missing people. Under, you, okay, you haven't even listened to what I want to say to you. Though. I have, love. You don't. But love. <laughs> I really have, love. Right, hold on. And I've got Jesus no. on the picture. Because you believe in evolution, so there. essentially you think... I don't believe in evolution. So, so, here we go. So, right. Are you both from monkeys? Almost? So here we go. So here we go. Right? Uh, Bob. So are we saying... Are we saying that... Are we saying that this genealogy is accurate? Yeah, basically, that's my question. Okay. Are, are, we, are you saying that this genealogy is I accurate? I trust Luke. So when it says, for instance, okay. yeah, that... Uh, because the son of Joseph was the son of 
Eli, is that accurate? No. That's not accurate. The son of someone cannot be the son of someone else if they're both men. You agree. Well, yes, you can actually be the son of someone Only if the they are your father. Yeah, but you just said the son of Joseph is the son of Eli. Correct. That's the same dude. No, Joseph, no, no, no. Joseph, the, Joseph, the son of Eli. Is the son of somebody else. Yeah, yeah I believe so, that. Yeah. So, is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, I trust Luke. I just said So, that link of the chain is accurate. What about I'm not saying there's Eli, a missing link Eli. of people. Ah, right. So there's I'm saying their ages aren't recorded. Okay. So, in terms of... In terms, in terms of timeline, it's irrelevant. In terms of, in terms of their links of names, it goes all the way back to yes. Adam. Yes. Okay? Yep. We have the age of Adam. Yep. We have the age of... Uh, Are you skipping? We have the age of Seth. Right. We have the age of Enosh. Yep. We have the age of Kenan. Right. We have the age of Mahalil. Yeah. Okay. Are you missing any out there? So, no, no, no. Where's the no. age of um, Abel? And so, if so we descendants? go to Genesis. We go to Genesis. No, I'm asking you genuinely. Well, well, let the... me let me finish my point. Okay. So we go to Genesis it and we start count, We go to Genesis and we go and we start counting all these ages. Yes. And we start adding them up. Now, eventually, you're right. Not every age of every person in this link is given. Not every age. Yeah, some of them could have been but what 900. We, what we do see, been... what we do see, what we do see, is that the ages continually shrink the further it goes forward in time. And there's no reason to assume that that stops, that it reverses, and that one of these people later down the line suddenly lives for 900 years. But there's no reason to doubt that it could happen. You, it's a speculation. It's probably it's would a speculation. Be upon. But but which one of us is following the biblical pattern of age? Not you, because you believe no, hold in evolution. On, hold on one second. You, in terms of the ages. Oh, just the ages. Yes, just the ages. All right. What else about Genesis do we discount? No, hold on. We're not I'm jumping around, Kay. We're just talking I'm not, I'm about the links. I'm standing firmly on the ground so let's that's talk about, probably over 6,000 so years, so let's talk but about, there's no proof. So let, let's talk about the, the, the ages. If you add all those ages up... And, and the missing ones. Right, I, I, I think it's a little less than that, actually. No, because if Adam lived for 900 years, that's already... That's one, yeah, but, but if you add up all the ages, I reckon it comes to about just over 6,000 years. Yeah? So, so oh, no. do, you, do you believe like, in a 6,000 year old? I don't believe the Bible says there's a 6,000 year old. I believe it's your exegesis and your mathematical, um, like, like filling in a couple of lines. I'm using someone else. Yeah, all right, they're mathematical. <laughs> if the Bible said of itself that at the time of writing, I, John, verify that, yeah. then I would go, oh, it has to But be. if you think, if you are arguing that because, because the Gospel of Luke says that Adam was a real person, therefore... All of Genesis has to be taken literally. It's not about lit it's not about literal versus figurative. Right, one second, I, I want to talk to this evolution. bro. Hey, hey, I was speaking to this bro. I know and JC, JC J yeah, but coming. unfortunately JC doesn't control my conversation. Ah. I'm speaking to this bro. Stop filming. He is he is making you're making the point. Oh, they're making all the asking. Yeah, and what I'm trying to say to you is that there aren't simply two categories. Yeah, that's, there where is the a, that's what I'm trying to explain. That's where the confusion comes in. It's a confusion if you want to hold on to just two categories. I'm saying give, give yourself a third category. Not confusion for me, by the way, for, other, for outside. But again, but again, again, but, but, again but again, but again, bro, what I'm saying to you is that there are, there are, and, and I think we need to probably draw it to a close because we are just repeating ourselves now. That in terms of, in terms of the, 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 this issue between science and the claims of the Christian faith. The claims of the Christian faith, the Christian paradigm is not dominated or dictated by the literalists. The literalists are a tiny camp within the Christian world. I am not a literalist. I actually speak for the majority of Christians. A lot of Christians believe that God literally created the world. A lot of Christians don't believe. Maybe a lot of Western, Western Christians don't, but a lot, a, a lot people from other cultures genuinely believe that. Yeah, and they haven't got access to the science that we have access to. Yep. they'll literally go and read the Bible and believe it literally. Okay. And I would apart say to them, no, I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm speaking. I'm going to just I'm, say I'm to the camera. Speaking. Apart from a right, belief do you in Christ, <laughs> walk with me. It doesn't matter what you believe oh, about no, other no, things. No, 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 no. So my point to you is, my point to you is that in terms. In terms, of, in terms of the categories of, of history, yeah, in terms of our categories of knowledge, the confusion I think is caused by the fact that a reaction in the 20th century among certain fundamentalist Christians against the abuse of science, and I agree that it was abused, has created a false dichotomy within our culture that feeds the atheistic argument. It feeds the atheistic argument because it buys into the narrative that the atheists want you to buy into, that science contradicts our faith. 
that's, you realise that's like 95% of young people coming up now. They literally reject the Bible. Literally. They, don't, they don't believe it. So what? It's a fairy tale. So what? They reject it for lots of reasons. For reasons like this. No, for, it's, it's because of a very lazy view of science. They'll just come out with a very glib statement. Science contradicts Christianity. They don't know anything about science. And they don't know anything about Christianity. Their ignorance and laziness is their own problem. It's not my problem. All I can do is stand by the faith and the truth as I understand it and offer it to people. If they want to be ignorant of science and they want to be ignorant of Christianity, I can't change that. Yeah? The fact that they are ignorant shouldn't cause you any com disturbance. You shouldn't be disturbed by other people's ignorance. Literally, like I said, keep going back to the Gospel of Luke, when I read that, that made me think so Adam was a literal person. Yep. So that's, 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 the, that's, that's what I was inferring from reading the Gospel uh, of Luke. At the risk of repeating myself, I know, I know. when it comes to our interpretations, there's three ways to test whether our interpretations, our, our paradigm of interpretation is accurate. Is it internally consistent? Does it correspond to reality as we encounter it? And does it practically work? Your li literalism, your literalism, I've not fully tested it, yeah? I don't think it's internally consistent because I think you're willing to be metaphorical when it suits you, when tested, yeah? I don't know that for a fact, I'm, I'm just going off a feeling. I don't believe in evolution. As, okay, as do you believe that the earth is flat? I believe what the Bible says. What does the, 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 the Bible say? I literally say? believe what the Bible says. I believe that. Okay. I don't believe in science. I believe in. I don't believe in okay. theoretical science. I so, believe in science. So where? So so. In terms, I, I believe what can be proven. Do you do you do you believe? That I don't believe in things that have no basis or like evolution that just grand assumptions. Cause, just because there's fossils of something that doesn't that just proves that something died. That doesn't prove that we came from that. So and so. There's inferences made because we have we share some similarities with. Say for example, with grass, which um, like something about in our lungs, we have similar yeah. things to. Do grass. you believe in carbon dating? That's that's also not really proof. Then. That's not really proof. No, it is a proof. How you, what you it's carbon dating? What are you carbon dating it it's against? Very, because you have nothing that's. It's the decaying of. It's the decaying of. I think. It's yeah, but also, but where's, uh, where's, uh, the, where's the where's the where's the start? It, it's it's based upon the the, the decay of the. I'm not. Well, these are all I'm not even. All assumptions. They're not assumptions, bro. This is hard science. Yeah, assumptions are used to then. But this is the point. Discredit the Bible. That's what I'm trying to say to you. But no, they're, they, 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 are, they are hard sciences that are abused by atheists to discredit the Bible that gullible Christians buy science? into and then argue against, thus feeding the whole cycle over and over again. So it's ignorance of religion from the atheists and ignorance of science from the atheists and ignorance from Christians who are ignorant of both their own religion and of science and they're just feeding one another in this silly cycle that is creating an argument where one does not have to exist. You're, and, and here's the thing, you've just demonstrated a superstition. You've just said essentially that really hard science, things that this whole scientific community has demonstrated considerably. They, they, they have demonstrated carbon dating. They have demonstrated carbon dating. It hasn't been recreated, it hasn't been proven. Carb but there's a point, either the words that you're saying demonstrate to me that you don't know what I'm talking about. Carbon, carbon dating. Carbon dating. Carbon dating. Carbon dating. Carbon dating. Carbon dating is something that allows us to determine and I'm not sure can't explain the full science myself but it's based the upon the decay of the rate the, the decay of uh, a carbon particular atom and the rate of its decay allows us to determine the age of the thing that it's decaying you know, you within. Know, you know there's been examples of two things being carbon dated and the, and the differences in the ages are the huge. Yes. So there's, so been, there's been evidences, there's been proof that something that literally died a few years ago has been carbon dated and it said this thing existed for 16 million years. So obviously carbon example. dating... You can go online as an example. Give me an example. Obviously, I can't from the top of my head. Pull it online. You just said we could do it online. But there is, there you is just made something I'll up on the spot. You carry on to You've just, just made something up on the spot. I have made up on the spot. I've right, brilliant. Let's call it. Carbon is not 100% no, accurate. No, of course it's not. You're right. It isn't. And I'm not saying that it is. I'm not making that argument. Science. But what I am saying is that you, you've, bought, you've, you've bought into a kind of a Christian superstition that, that you know this idea that the scientific community can't be trusted. Yeah, sorry, people sorry, are literally being I'm misled by science. Me. Literally, so many people are being misled by science. That's no, they're not being misled by science. They are not being misled by Bob, science. They are being misled by ignorant Christians on one side and ignorant atheists on the other. And those two, those two ignorant groups are working together why would ignorant Christians work with ignorant scientists? Because 
Christians, that, Christians, want people Christians to God. the Christians that try to say you can't trust science don't know enough about science. The atheists that say that science contradicts religion don't know enough about religion. That's but the science, ignorance. Science does contradict religion. Because no, it doesn't. Scientifically, you can't prove that Jesus was from, uh, rose from the dead. Scientifically, I agree. You that don't need history, to. but but it's you don't need to. Science is literally proof. But that's a category mistake. That's a category mistake because you're assuming that everything has to be proven by science, and not everything has to be proven by that's, science. That's, that's the premise this of is science. A, this is when a historical prove, question. The Bible was false. This is a historical question about whether miracles can happen, and miracles are not subject to scientific laws. So that's a category mistake right there. It's a lack of sophisticated thinking on the behalf of the Christian that thinks that they have to play the, to the tune that the, 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 the militant atheists are using. Yeah, I found examples of like three to four hundred year inaccuracies. He's saying that the southern hemisphere has had periods of differing carbon uh, like well, base levels and that affects that? yeah what's the source yeah i spoke to hashim earlier he said he was going to come to physics physics dot physics dot org and what is it saying it's saying um the bit I that i just looked at yeah there's not many people today so, the, not gonna so pre-modern ones yeah. used the standard northern and southern hemisphere calibration <laughs> but the one that i got to was they yeah, tested the same tree and one got 1610 and one got 1940 so that was the 300 ish year discrepancy okay and when scientists when scientists encounter that because i'm not i, I, I wasn't ignorant of the fact that these kind of things occur they will then go into looking as to why there may be a discrepancy it should to be that in the same item, the same tree should but have what i'm saying is that this is based on actual hard science it isn't a superstition, it isn't a theory, there is an experiment that is carried out that observes something in reality. Evolution is a theory though, isn't it? The theory of evolution, it that's is a what theory, it's called. Yes, yes, but the Bible theory of evolution. is not a theory as it's not you. There's many theories about many things. Yeah. My theory is and, God and, created man in his image. And I believe that as well. Exactly. Not from a monkey, yeah, exactly. not from speciation. No, I, see, speciation is a thing. No. Birds can adapt their yeah, but beaks, I don't, but they can't become a cat. Yeah, exactly. It's There's no species. It's not actual evolution. You can't prove evolution. A cat doesn't evolution. become a fish because there's a lot prove, of water. You can prove adaptation, obviously, guys, but you guys, can't prove guys, evolution. Guys, guys, like, the, 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 I, and, it, until you are internally consistent and want to argue for a young earth, and want to argue. Do you? Like, it, it, you, can't round, you can't get round. You can't get round the chronology of Genesis. It doesn't specifically say that. If you go to the British Museum and you find dinosaur bones in the British Museum, look at Joe. Explain to me where are all those dinosaurs today. Joe. What? Wow. Joe. In Joe, it speaks about a creature that God created. There's no more. Yeah. So that's that accounts for dinosaurs. Where are they? They've become extinct. Does not, that does not account. It talks about when did they become extinct? As of when? I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell me. I don't know. Dinosaurs, I mean, I, I, I just mind boggling. I'm not saying there's boggling. a young earth, don't you understand? He's yeah. not saying it either. So you're arguing against a bit of a straw man. So in how, that. How We're talking about evolution. How old, evolution. How, how old are Let's stick with evolution. Though. Where is the Let's other stick historical with evolution because of Genesis dinosaurs? This connects it. This how? connects to it. Tell me how. Because this, 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 this the, the, the argument that there are not... That, that, I mean, I'm not even sure what you're arguing, to be honest. In terms against of dinosaurs, evolution. yes, so I'm going to use dinosaurs as an example like that a literal do. interpretation <laughs> of Genesis does not stand up to scrutiny. All the crawling creatures. Okay, exactly. Noah all saved all creatures. We can determine how long Noah lived. Roughly, based upon the chronology of his age, so like the chronology of age. his children's age, and their descendants. We get a rough estimate of how long he lived. It's less than 6,000 years ago. Are you saying that dinosaurs died out less than 6,000 years ago? No, before Noah. I don't believe in uh, like that it was a global cataclysm. That's what the Bible says. They have the global Agreed. Like cover the that face of what, the earth. Yes. But in terms, of the, in terms of the observer, if their world has been flooded, that is their world. Who is the observer? God said to Noah that the whole world will be flooded. So if Noah doesn't know what the whole Again, world is. Again, you're assuming that you're assuming that it either has to be literally true or it's false. No, no, the, the, the flood isn't given when as, says, a, when as says, some sort of figure. The whole earth, I don't see how that can... It's God's literally word. saying literally the whole earth. So where are the dinosaurs? Extinct before that event. They could have been. We don't know. Extinct before that event. Yeah, that's a potential. That's a 
a, a potential solution to your thing that goes it's still not explaining okay. evolution so in terms explain of to me explain to me no, okay. you explain to me evolution explain to me, explain you to me explain to me evolution if, if they if they died out how did they die out across the whole earth no idea because evolution i have no idea god doesn't tell me right but that and, and that's he the point he couldn't fit them on the boat they were massive point, you're, you mock but i do it's, mock because you're mock. avoiding the question you do mock yes, but, but the the, the reality is exactly. if you try to if you try to if you try to um push a literal interpretation of genesis you're going to encounter lots and lots of problems and that's why I don't. But Christ was definitely crucified. Yeah, Christ was definitely crucified. Just, oh, just checking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and the Gospel of Luke is literal. The Gospel of Luke. Luke recorded. Again, you've got to understand something that I said earlier to you that when we're talking about literary reforms of history, we're not talking about live camera action, we're talking about a portrait. It's more like a still picture. So when you say, is it literally true? Do I do I literally think that every single moment of Genesis is chronologically accurate? No, of course I don't believe that. Do you that. literally believe that there were monkeys or some sort of like mammal, and then there's a missing something, and then humans? I believe that humans and monkeys share a common ancestor. Yeah. So how were they no created by God then? How was man because created God, by God yeah. if there's an ancestor? Yeah, because he created it through evolution. Are you saying God can't? Are you mad? Are you saying God can't create evolution? You know I'm not saying that. I'm asking you your opinion. I'm not questioning God. I've just given it to you. Okay. I'm not God says otherwise. God says we made man in our image. Sorry, what you've just said, I'm questioning God. Why? It must be because his word says otherwise. His word doesn't speak of a missing link. His word, hang on. His word doesn't speak of a missing ancestor. He says that man is unique and in his own image and fearfully and wonderfully made. Not fearfully evolved, not fearfully popped up in a petri dish. God made man, sorry, not mankind. I'm sorry, man. but that, that's a, a really simplistic category, a really simplistic understanding of the text. Yeah, okay. it is. Like, it, it is it a homonym, you're yes, right. Yes, yeah. yes. In terms of in terms of in terms of if I take a clay yeah. and I create a jar, I mould it, right? Does the act of moulding mean that I've not made it? No, but does the clay have an ancestor? Does the clay have an ancestor in another yes, pot that you it made? It does have an ancestor. No. It has ancestor of no, dust and water that has been brought together yeah. under pressure. But God, an God doesn't speak about bringing materials hold together. On, hold on one but second. God does not speak of materials being brought one together one apart from the rib. You're, you're arguing again for a, sim, a, a literal interpretation of When Genesis. it comes to creation, yes, I am. Right, and I don't believe that for okay. the reasons that I've tried to state to this brother. But you're in the minority. No, I'm really not. Really? I'm really well, then Christians not. need to come back to the Bible then. I'm really... No, Christians need to come to an intelligent they don't interpretation need to come back to the Bible. Of, of the scriptures. When God says... See, that's... That, okay, that's, but sorry, I, no. where did I say... Where did I say, Kay, that no, people don't, don't have to come back to the Bible? You said no, they no, don't. Though, Rewind the camera. That's, that's really Christians not. need to come back to the Bible then. I'm really... No, Christians need to come to an intelligent they don't interpretation need to come back to the Bible. of the scriptures. But I, that is you not what no, I said. You said no, you did say that. You may have spoken error. You can just rewind. Okay, I didn't it. Bob, say that. You did. No, I didn't. Say I'm going that. out on a limb. Rewind no, it. You no, did. I didn't. Yeah, people will decide for themselves. But if you're going to just put words into I my didn't. mouth, then I'll just have to correct you. Excellent. I didn't. Okay. I'm yes, correcting you exactly now. That is exactly what you've just said. We are disagreeing, but the camera no, is what, right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. So then so let, drop that no, part. Don't, 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 okay. don't just chuck in whatever interpretation in of my words that you I want. I said Christians need to come back to the Bible, and you said no, they don't. No, what I said is they don't have to come. They they shouldn't come back to a simplistic interpretation of the Bible. Bible. After you said that no, they don't. That is what I said. Exactly. So you cut me off before I'd finished the statement, put in your so words, lying, and put in your put in words before I'd finished a statement I didn't do that. saying that I had said something that I hadn't. You had said it. No. It's on okay. camera. Anyway, you just admitted that's just, it. That's just a Got silly you. argument. Evolution so, is a silly back to argument. you, bro. Back to you, bro. I think we, we're going to have to stop there. Yeah? Because there's some of the things that I want to talk about. I've given you my opinion. You can go away and you can read it, listen to it again over the video camera I think it's important that as Christians that we recognize what is of primary importance and what is of secondary importance because at the end of the day for me personally I don't care whether you believe that Genesis is literal or whether Genesis is not literal it doesn't make any difference about whether I can have fellowship with you or whether I can see you as a Christian or all the rights and duties that come with that and I hope that that's a mutual thing yeah so if we agree that it is a secondary issue then it is something that we can discuss and it's something that we can debate but it isn't something that we need to fall out of which I think we me and you haven't you know? 
Yeah, and, and, and my clarity my clarity is my clarity is it's not a case that it has to be true or false. Sorry, that doesn't my clarity is that it's not that it has to be literally true or it's false. My clarity is that there is a third category that these kinds of things fit into. Where myth and history come together. And myth is not false. Yeah? Christ spoke in parables, they were truths. Myths are not false. They tell truths, but not literal truths. Yeah? Science and Christian faith don't conflict with one another. They're not in contradiction. But they are made to be in contradiction by people that either don't know enough about the Christian faith or don't know enough about science. Okay, so that's my position. I'll leave it with you, you make up your own mind. You know, and, and we can still worship God together. Okay, peace be with you. Thank you, Rolf. Thank you. No, wrap up. Wrap <laughs> up. Okay. Wrap up. Yeah, Stop it, you. Thank you. Or I'll just get another cameraman. <laughs> so, in terms of... In terms of in terms of in terms of what we've talked about, there are a lot of Christians who share this brother's opinion, as Kay clearly demonstrates. And I gen I, I genuinely believe Love you, love you too, Kay. <laughs> but but we genuinely we genuinely hurt ourselves as Christians when we fight against science. There's no reason to. Science doesn't have the 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 power of description to say anything about the truths of our faith it doesn't say anything about God's existence or not the people that use science to try and disprove Christianity you should stop them and just say to them look you're abusing science science doesn't talk about this topic but at the same time when Christians are using scripture in my experience I haven't yet met a literal Christian who literally interprets Genesis as being consistent in their literal interpretations because when they're tested I find that they will choose which parts of the scripture they believe to be literal or not. One example for all of you that are probably ranting away at the comment section <laughs> underneath <laughs> it, says that, it says that Adam and Eve had two sons yeah. it doesn't say that they had any daughters if you're going to take literal Genesis literally where do the daughters come from? If you demand that it has to be literal, be consistent. So you, you measure your paradigm by three things. One, is it internally consistent? Two, does it correspond to reality as we find it? Three, does it practically allow us to go forward in our lives and to organize our lives in a good way? I believe that Christianity meets all three of those criteria. I don't believe that biblical literalists do match all three of those criteria but nor do I believe that atheistic abusers of science like Richard Dawkins can meet all three of those criteria by the way Richard Dawkins fails on the third because he says that the world has no meaning and is at base indifferent and chaotic but then he tries to ascribe meaning to the world because he loves his wife and his family so you know, if it doesn't fit all three of those criteria, it falls down. Islam falls down because it doesn't correspond to reality. It denies the historical crucifixion of Jesus. Christianity works in all three, but it's uh, the intelligent Christianity of St. Augustine, of Oregon, of Galileo Galilei, of Copernicus, of n a number of other Christian scientists who don't see the tension or the conflict between science and the Christian faith. That is a third way of meeting this debate. It's the one I stand in, and it's the one that I encourage all of you to stand in as well. And go and look up those Christians that, that stand in the way, I, the, the way I stand. I leave you with the words of Galilee Galilei, which is that the Bible teaches us how to go to heaven. It doesn't teach us how the heavens go. Thank you, Bob. Second wrap-up. I just want to read uh, this verse, which is Genesis 5, 4, and it says, In the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, or 800, and he begat sons and daughters. So those are the daughters. Um, I would say in terms of evolution, um, I used to hold a view that it could be married up to science, but to say that science, like science is fallible, 
and God isn't. So if God directly says to me through the Bible that I don't believe to be corrupted or a, a poor interpretation, that he has done something, i.e. an event, um, as in created man, then I don't assume man to have any ancestors other than, I don't, I don't know what God did before he got to earth. I don't know. But the fact is that we're in God's image. I don't believe we came from something that wasn't in his image. Um, other than that, the Psalms could support evolution in terms of timelines and a thousand years is as one day to the Lord. So there could be 6,000, 600,000 years of evolution in six days of Genesis. But I think that if you discount such a large part, and then like the other guy said, it's uh, Adam's mentioned in the New Testament where Christ tells you when he's speaking in parables. He then in, like explains them. It's not hidden knowledge. So that's it really. I just, I'd rather have the Bible over science because science is theoretical. Scientific laws can be replaced by other laws as technology advances. Um, but also, like the other guy pointed out, uh, ancient peoples weren't necessarily unscientific. They just had different, sometimes uh, better methods of doing things that we've now lost. Possibly because they were that arrogant that they didn't record them or that we couldn't find them. So Job, I think, accounts for dinosaurs in some respect. I don't think there are any holes in God's uh, actions in Genesis. And if you discount the creation part of Genesis, you, of, you have to discount whether Adam had sons and daughters, which he did. I don't know. I just don't know. I know that I believe in uh, God's word. And, uh, Do you believe that we're all born of incestuous relationships? No, I know that when uh, Cain, when God was admonishing Cain, and Cain said, please don't send me over there, they'll kill me. I don't know who the they are, but I know that God knew who he meant. So, I leave. if we are, if we are, how glorious we've all became. I mean, it's just uh, worth thinking about. Cain said, Cain, <laughs> Cain said, Cain said, don't send me over there because they will kill me. Okay. Cain was the son of Adam and Eve. Just think about that for a minute. It was. Just think about that for a minute. Good. In other words, my, my brothers and my sisters or my sons and daughters will kill me. That's essentially Adam was already over a hundred by then and may have, who knows, who knows. Thank you guys.